Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I have got a very special monitor for you. This is the largest Sony PVM that I've ever worked on. It is a Sony PVM 3230 that is a high resolution Trinitron monitor that I got to service and man I gotta tell you when they talk about things like barn finds this was a literal barn find so I can't wait to show you the uh, repair footage but first I'd just like to show you some of the documentation I was easily able to find online uh, including the service manual but the first thing I want to show you is just a little operational or instructional manual on this monitor so it could show you some of the cooler things about the monitor without getting into the full service um, menu or manual but if you do need to get into service yours that's a great reference point and so if we start here and look at some of the things on this monitor I wanted to show you that were important were the features there is a 650 TV line monitor uh, tube on this, a fine pitch Trinitron tube. Now, the one I worked on was from 1990. So this is in the late 80s, early 90s was when this one was made. Here's some other things that it talks about on this monitor. Uh, specifically, it does have analog RGB, which is important. And I think that over here, this might be one of the more underrated things about this specific monitor, and that is that it has an amazing sound system, hi-fi sound uh, coming straight out of it, stereo, and then it also supports a Sony remote, so you can use a remote control and adjust your monitor from, say, your couch uh, with this monitor. So that's a very big plus. There's a lot of good things in here telling you how to use this monitor and some of the features of it so if you uh, are interested please go in there and check this out the last thing I want to really mention is the weight on it and hopefully it lists it here towards the bottom but it is a very heavy monitor I actually had to have myself and two other people lift it so if you do get one be very careful trying to move it and you don't hurt yourself so if we get down here to some of the uh, specifications on here it does have the 93k color temperature so please note that it's not going to have multiple color temperatures it just has the one color temperature and it is not 65 k or 6500 it's 9300 okay so there's one thing to note specifically on there um, i will tell you it does have a exactly a uh 32 inch tube on it there's some look at the the actual dimensions on the screen it gives you some formulas so you can figure that out and i promise guys we'll get to that real soon to the uh actual stuff on here well i'm not able to find that exact weight i'm sure it's listed somewhere in here and i'm just missing it but dimensions here we go 185 pounds and three ounces so it's a monster um definitely couldn't lift it on my own so just keep that in mind if you come across this monitor, you're going to need somebody to help you move it. Uh, so let's go ahead now and get into our footage today for this monitor. And as I said, this is definitely a rough condition monitor. If you saw a couple of the videos I've done in the last couple of weeks, I did have it in the background behind me. It's been swapped out for 2530 now because the 3230 is gone from my shop. But at the time when I got it, I could not even get a stable video signal into it uh, except RGB, and it was very wonked out. You'll see that. But I wanted to, you to take a special look at how just dirty this is. That white stuff, I think that is like spider and bug droppings. This thing was just loaded with spiders. Those droppings were all over the place. Lots of cobwebs, and it definitely looks like something we just pulled straight out of a barn. Thankfully, there wasn't any like evidence of water damage. There was tape. Uh, along the sides of this bezel and that's quite common for these larger monitors if they've had a rough life like it looks this one had like this one has uh, just again the front was filthy and you can only imagine what it's going to be like when we get inside of this thing so that's just a quick look at how awfully dirty the outside of this monitor is as well as look at the picture i mean it almost gives you a headache just to look at it to begin with the first thing I'm going to do is take the shell off and I want to really get in the back here and do two things. I want to check the 
how see how clean it is inside and then i want to get that shell that bottom back casing out of my garage immediately and i'll show you why in a second but these are the main boards this first one i'm focusing on here is our geometry board uh, this is the main deflection board, and then there was the mini board with all the controls on it, which we'll go into de detail later on. But this is uh, some of the botched repair work I found inside this PVM. Unfortunately, somebody probably 20 plus years ago had gotten inside here and just tried to do some repairs. And so when you find that, it's kind of disheartening, especially when you see they did such a lousy job. We'll see some more of that, unfortunately, later on as we're working on this monitor. But we can tell for sure that no one's been inside it for quite a long time. There's cobwebs all over the inside and multiple spiders living inside of the monitor. And then I wanted to show you the outside of the shell. It was pretty much unbelievable. Uh, the camera I was using may have a little bit of a refresh rate problem. So just keep that in mind. But you'll get to see here <laughs> the exact... Uh, moment i looked under this shell and saw i mean there's live spiders there was three or four of them and they had 20 plus egg sacs ready to hatch and they had carcasses of beetles and just you know years of free reign to use that under spot of this pvm as their personal trap for every creepy crawly bug that managed to get close to this inside of that barn that it had been stored in for the last few years. So naturally, I'm going to have to clean all that off, which isn't a big deal, and I'm glad it's outside the house. You see, first I saw that spider in Tennessee. We actually do have black widow spiders, and it scared me. I thought it was a black widow. But thankfully, it wasn't just a small, uh, nothing special spider. And so now I'm just going to get in and clean off the rest of the cobwebs, as well as a lot of that over... Uh, saturated dust that's built up on the components just using that non-conductive paintbrush with extra clean clean bristles there sorry about that we're going to get in there and clean off a lot of the cabling as well as a lot of the components and make sure that we get all that built up dust and cobwebs off of there before i even really start working on this thing i don't want to get in there and um again have all this stuff short something out or something like that so i want to make sure i get uh, a lot of this cleaned off and it also helps to inspect the boards you go through cleaning them it gives you a first opportunity to inspect the boards and the inside of the monitor and to see how it's built out because again this is the first time i've worked on the 3230 it's very rare at this point to even find one of these still around or working again this one had a quite a rough life it looked like it had traveled a few times and been serviced a few times before and I don't know that it was done professionally or by, you know, anybody from Sony. I imagine it was probably a smaller outfit. But just getting in there and knocking a lot of that dust off. And just so you could see the ups, uh, top side of what the inside of the PVM looks like. Now, the other board on the opposite side of our deflection board will not be receiving any service specifically other than a checkup and an inspection just to make sure everything looks fine and it's not causing any issues because that board doesn't get as hot as the deflection boards or the power supply board and it also doesn't control a lot of things that we're even going to be concerned with adjusting on this monitor except for color you know if you have a color issue and you can't correct it you can want to try to maybe inspect that board closely and get a um, feel for if anything's uh, component has failed on that or even the neck board you could service both of those on this, but um, we definitely have to get in there and service the deflection board. You'll see why here in a minute. So finally got it cleaned up, and we're ready to put the 240p test suite into the input on the RGB and start to adjust those potentiometers to see what it looks like at first try without even replacing any capacitors. I wanted to give it a good test and see you know how it would look and how it would play out so I did that and it was very touchy I could not dial anything in really it would just drift way out or way in especially on the pin settings and so I kind of got the idea that we're probably gonna have to replace a lot of capacitors in this and also uh, we had some purity imbalance here 
And that's most likely just because it's not been turned on a lot. Plus, there's a lot of magnetism that affects things in my garage, specifically where I work. And so that can just be more a product of that magnetism in that spot where the tube is setting. But the most important thing is we definitely got to service this deflection board and most likely the other deflection board just to make sure that we can adjust it properly. You see, it's a lot of potentiometers on this board. Now, thankfully, it's just single-sided, and it's pretty high quality, so it's easy to service. Now, we'll show you probably some more spots in here where someone has come in and tried to heat up some points for some reason, thought maybe there was a cold solder joint. I'm not sure, but um, I definitely went through and recapped this entire board, and that way I'll just have a peace of mind of knowing that at least this board will not be causing hopefully any issues as we try to go on and get this monitor fixed up for Eric. Eric is a Patreon member and he brought this 3230 and he also had seven other 2530s. Seven, that's right. And unfortunately, a lot of them are tore up. One of them is behind me. But you'll have a lot of videos coming about those bigger monitors. And again, they're, most of those are in really pretty rough condition, so they had to have a lot of work done to them. So back to the 3230, the board's been restored. And here it is. So we're going to plug it in and see what it looks like. So um, now we'll try to go in and adjust again. And I'm just going to spend a few minutes here tweaking these potentiometers. You can see how this process is. It's very manual and uh, finicky and time consuming, but you know, you're going to have to just use a combination of spinning those potentiometers till you get the screen as best you can. So I continued to attempt to work on this screen and get the, you know, picture looking good enough to uh, over scan a little bit, but I was having troubles because when you expand the screen size, you'll notice that it also causes the pin cushion settings to warp a little bit. But after a while, I was able to get a better picture and I did have to do one more component swap. So I did not have any of these potentiometers in my shop, but uh, what I did was I used a potentiometer from another spot on the board up here that I'm going to point out, and that's one of these convergence adjustments. I swapped that one. It had the same tolerance and rating as the one that was not working that well over here in the pin cushion settings. Now that you might wonder if that would have affected the corner. Not really, because that setting didn't really change the convergence as much when I adjusted it. So I used it and swapped them and I was able to actually get a little bit better of an adjustment with a better shape potentiometer. I also off camera recapped the D1 board. So that board has been pretty well serviced. There were some spots on it that had been touched up before by someone else. So that was kind of disappointing. But now the real trouble is going to go in here and get to the power supply unit. And that is behind that input board. So to get to that, we'll need to, again, take this monitor apart and get into the back. I want to unplug it, and then we'll unplug all these connection points just like any other board on here. Now, these ones are all a size that's specific to a specific spot on that board, and they're all zip-tied together, so you shouldn't have any trouble servicing this board if you have to take it out and get it back in it's pretty easy there's two phillips head screwdriver or screws holding the input board in place and then once you lift it out of the way you can get into the back of the pvm and we can talk about the power supply unit and the power supply unit was kind of a mess on this monitor many of you looking at this might say well i don't see what you're talking about but specifically we're going to go through I'm going to show you what was really messed up on this one. So somebody had come in here, obviously, and worked on this before. And they had messed with this FC card. It had been hot glued into the CRT back right there. Or the power supply had been hot glued right in there. We also had a custom fuse installed here. And so I was going to have to try to do my best to work around that fuse surprisingly this monitor turned on but just seeing that uh, to start with kind of is concerning now when I take this board out I did mark where 
each one of these connectors was located on the power supply board that I'm about to remove because a couple of them were similar in size so I wanted to make sure that I had them all lined up properly so definitely document where they go there were four screws holding it in place they are inside the frame so once I got it out here we can take a better close look at the real problem areas this is these are some extremely old capacitors 30 years old and it's definitely time to just go ahead and replace those here's a look at this fuse this is just crazy and unbelievable it's been working this long and unfortunately I don't have this fuse so I'm gonna try to work around it keep it there for now and as long as it keeps working uh, we'll work around it uh, but when we we'll look at the bottom here and see how it's attached on the bottom of the board there's a lot of repair work we're gonna have to end up doing over there same thing with this board I'm not really sure why it's been glued in it's supposed to be a connector in there that just holds it similar to the ones that are holding in a lot of the cabling on this monitor I don't understand why this person had to glue this board in but it was done that way and I'm not gonna uh, attempt to remove all that and damage this further and this was a real great spot here that had been damaged this is where one of the ground connection points was coming into the board which would have looped through the whole monitor there's also a couple other spots on some resistors that were burned up some of these connection points looked like they had possibilities of cold solder joints developing and here's the back of the fuse repair, which was just an utter mess. Just, ugh, disgusting. And some more spots on some resistors, some ICs, and really, it just, you know, you look at this and you're wondering how this even continued to work as long as it did. It's a big blob of solder. <laughs> Someone said slaughter. Solder over there. And then we've got some capacitors that we're going to be changing around here so we're definitely going to have to work around this fuse I'm going to reflow the solder on all these points too because again it just looks very dull and, and nasty and uh, really surprising that it maintained current and was able to work even at all um, and considering the condition of this board and just the terrible repair work that somebody did to it so here's my cap kit We'll go ahead and get started and swapping out a lot of these caps. Uh, you'll notice a lot of these caps have changed size significantly after we change them. It looks a lot better. Um, these are even better than the ones I pulled because they're 30 years newer. There has some, been some technological advances in the last 30 years in capacitors, so they are better. And I'm going to show you the board now with a close-up of the repaired areas just so you can see again how I went and reflowed solder and cleaned the boards and then tried to uh, just do the best I could to repair a lot of the botched work this was even loose and had to be grounded onto another point so but it's still functioning here's the fuse area and all that I reflowed all this solder and replaced all these capacitors so at least uh, Eric can have some confidence knowing that it probably is a lot better than it, it was for sure when we got started with this project because again that was just a terrible job and, and you know you, if you don't really uh, know what you're doing in here you can go in and damage it but I wouldn't even say that about anything now because this was obviously done by who knows from I think it could be 20 years ago someone tried to come in here and do these repairs and somehow they made it work until uh, we got it now so let's go ahead and put the power board back in run some more tests and hopefully everything will work uh, after that because I'm a little bit I was a little bit nervous I got to be honest it's it's not uh, it's not a guarantee that everything on there is perfect but uh, I do check everything like I've shown you in the past in other videos with my multimeter and continuity and so I also am not surprised when it works because it should, you, you know, hopefully everything work fine after we do uh, the best we can and check all our work. So now that that power supply has been recapped, we can finally go in here and try to do some more tightening in on our adjustments. And I could show you here what this struggling uh, chassis and deflection board has a problem with. If you look here at the 
point point in the middle of the screen that I'm circling with my cursor right now, right above my hand where it's red and white meet. It kind of bows slightly towards the center. Now, in other monitors, they'll have adjustment for that called sexy. So if this had that sexy adjuster, then you could dial that in a little bit and push that towards the center and balance it out. But unfortunately, when you expand the horizontal size on it, it just it starts to morph the edges because it's really pushing the limits of the deflection yoke to have a perfectly uh, set screen on such a large tube. But I did the best I could with it, and it looked a heck of a lot better than what we started with. So we're going to show you some um, action shots here. And I will minimize myself even a little bit more so you could see that uh, I mean it looks really good for a 600 line monitor and over 600 line it says 650 uh, so it's very sharp and thankfully the colors were still good uh, no weak color gun or anything so that's a big positive uh, there are probably some other things you could work on on this CRT but that's all we're going to do for it for today and I thought I'd show you an after picture of the cleaned up PVM because I had to spend a lot of time to get rid of all those spider webs and hopefully I got rid of all of them, but maybe uh, one or two managed to stow away high, hot and hide under something that I just couldn't see. But for the most part, they're gone. And uh, it was just a, all around a, a very fun project. But it's difficult to work on such a large monitor. I mean, and it, but I am glad to be able to have the opportunity to work on it. And I hope that um, if you've run into one of these and you're lucky enough to get one, that maybe referencing the service manual or even looking at this video might help you if in some point, some directions to what the problems might be. I did have to buy some new duct tape and apply it on the side there of this bezel because there was no um, there's no way the bezel would hold together anymore without the tape unfortunately but all in all we got it cleaned together or cleaned up put together and adjusted out to where uh, it looks pretty good now and um, I think Eric's going to be like, very happy with it so uh, all I can say is I'm glad my back is glad that this job is over with and uh, I hope I don't have any more 29 inch CRTs that are, or larger 32 inch excuse me the last one was 29 this one is 32 um, but Sony kind of went away from the very large screens there are some BVMs that are 32 inches I've never seen one of those but who knows maybe somebody will bring one of those by this year and get them serviced. Uh, next time, we're probably going to be looking at uh, 14L5. That was Corey from My Life and Gaming's second monitor he brought to the shop. That needs to have a tube swap, so that'll be an inter interesting repair video. Thanks for joining me today on this lengthy and large PVM repair. Uh, if you do have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and please leave a thumbs up if you watched to this point and enjoyed it. And I'll see all you guys next time with some more retro content.